Welcome to the second part of the Silver Commissioning Tutorial. In this video, you will learn the essentials of the Silver Lighting Control System. You will get familiar with the available profiles and scenarios, and learn how to customize their parameters to meet your lighting needs. In the first part of the tutorial, you learned how to create areas and lighting zones within your project. Now, we will discuss how to add specific lighting controls to your zone. Right-click on one of your zones and choose Edit. You will see a list of predefined lighting control profiles. Each of them comes with a set of features and settings that reflect typical lighting needs in a particular type of space. You can pick one of these predefined profiles and apply it to your zone right away. This is the quickest way to set up a lighting zone and make it ready for on-site commissioning. You can also customize any of the available profiles. To do this, click the pen icon next to the name of the profile you wish to modify. Here you can Change the name of the profile. Change the lighting control scenario assigned to it. Customize the parameters of the scenario assigned to the profile. Remember that once you are done with your customization, you will have to save the introduced changes. There are two options. If you click Save, this customized profile will be applied to all the zones within your project that use this particular profile. If you click Save As, you will create a new profile that will be applied only to the zone you are editing at the moment. You will also be able to use this customized profile later on in other zones. Finally, if none of the available profiles meet your requirements, you can create your own. To do this, unfold the list of available profiles, scroll down, and choose New Profile. You will have to enter its name and assign a lighting control scenario to it. Now let's take a look at the lighting control scenarios available in the Silver Commissioning app. There are several options here. From Manual Control and Occupancy Sensing to Central Control and Daylight Harvesting. The first scenario we will look at is the Manual Control scenario. The manual control scenario does not involve any sensors. Instead, it relies on wall switches to facilitate manual on-off and dimming. By customizing relevant parameters, you can specify the maximum output of the luminaires within each zone. The next group of scenarios introduces sensor-driven vacancy and occupancy sensing strategies. Both of them introduce occupancy sensors to reduce energy consumption by turning the luminaires off when the space is not occupied. The only difference is that in vacancy sensing, the occupied phase is triggered only via a wall switch, while in occupancy sensing, it's triggered by the occupancy sensors. Depending on the availability of natural light in a given space, both vacancy sensing and occupancy sensing can be augmented with a daylight harvesting strategy to maximize lighting efficiency and energy savings. Daylight harvesting strategies employ ambient light sensors to automatically adapt the luminaire output based on the amount of natural light available. The next type of scenario we will discuss is the multiple scene scenario. It allows you to set up to four scenes that can be triggered automatically by the scheduler, or manually with the wall switch. This is the most flexible scenario, as it combines functionalities offered by all other scenarios. In individual scenes, the luminaire's output can either stay at a predefined level, or it can follow the occupancy sensing scenario with or without daylight harvesting. You can schedule automatic transmissions between different static scenes, or even schedule exact times when automatic control scenarios will be enabled or disabled. Note that scheduling is available only for installations that include a gateway device. The last scenario introduces central control capabilities. Even though Bluetooth Mesh is designed for robust decentralized control, a mesh lighting network can also be integrated with the building's central control system if needed. The central control scenario should be used in spaces where all luminaires are supposed to be controlled by a central controller that receives data from sensors and switches. The central controller determines the appropriate light levels for all luminaires within a zone. Now that we have covered the different types of control scenarios, let's take a look at the parameters available in each scenario. Some parameters are common for all scenarios in the app, but others are available only for a specific type of scenarios. The manual control scenarios come with three primary parameters. 
default light level, high and low end trim, and power up behavior. Default light level lets you specify the output of the luminaires within a given zone. When switched on via the switch, the luminaires will automatically reach that level. By specifying the fade time, you can decide how long the transition from off to on is going to take. High and low end trim allows you to specify the minimum and maximum allowable output of the luminaires. Power up behavior lets you decide what will happen when the luminaires are powered up, that is, when power is restored to them following a power outage. There are three options, restore, keep light off, and define brightness. The default setting is restore, and returns the luminaires to the same output they had before an outage. This is the only option that automatically brings back any automatic control scenario that was in place prior to the outage. In Keep Light Off, the luminaires will remain off when power is restored. Lastly, Defined Brightness allows you to specify the desired output of the luminaires following an outage. Occupancy Sensing and Vacancy Sensing scenarios have additional parameters that can be customized. In addition to high and low end trim and power up behavior, there are three groups of parameters that allow you to customize the light levels and timeouts of the individual lighting phases. To better understand what they are and how they can be customized, let's get familiar with the automatic lighting control capabilities supported by Bluetooth mesh networking. In this automatic lighting control, there are three phases, occupied, prolonged, and vacant. You can specify the light levels and timeouts associated with each of these phases. The occupied phase begins when the sensors detect occupancy within a given zone, or when a wall switch is pressed. Once this phase starts, a timer is triggered and the luminaire's output is set to the predefined value. Since each occupancy detection restarts the timer, the luminaire's output remains unchanged as long as the zone remains occupied. If the zone becomes vacant and the timer expires, the prolonged phase begins. The prolonged phase is a transitional phase that also has a light level and timer associated with it. After the timer for the prolonged phase expires, the luminaires start dimming down and the vacant phase begins. Typically, this will mean that the luminaires are off, although the minimum light level for luminaires in the vacant mode can also be specified. One last thing to remember is that whenever a switch is pressed, or the sensors detect occupancy during any phase, the system returns to the beginning of the occupied phase, and the timer is restarted. Now that we understand the basics of lighting control and its associated phases, let's get back to explain the sensor-driven vacancy and occupancy sensing strategies. Once in the occupied phase, both these scenarios follow the same flow that we've described a moment ago, transitioning through occupied, prolonged, and vacant. For the occupied and prolonged phases, you can adjust three different parameters, light level, timeout, and fade. For the vacant phase, you can adjust light level and fade. Light level allows you to set the default output of luminaires for a particular phase. Note that the brightness can be set to a non-zero value for the vacant phase, which will result in an always-on lighting control. Timeout lets you specify the time after which the current phase will transition into the next phase if no occupancy is detected. Each occupancy detection resets the timer taking us back to the beginning of the occupied phase. Fade time allows you to specify how long the transition from the previous phase is going to take. Another parameter that is available for all occupancy sensing and vacancy sensing scenarios is manual override timeout. This is useful for zones with wireless switches that allow end users to override the current sensor-driven control scenario. With this parameter, you can set the time after which the automatic control will be restored if no occupants is detected. In scenarios using daylight harvesting, you can specify an additional parameter, keep light above minimum value. It allows you to specify the minimum output of the luminaires within a given zone, regardless of the availability of natural light. This parameter can be specified individually for each lighting phase. The parameters that can be adjusted in the remaining scenarios should all look familiar to you by now. For more detailed information about any of them, please refer to the Silver Commissioning User Manual. That's it for the second part of the Silver Commissioning tutorial. You should now be able to create different types of lighting zones within your project. In the next part, we will go through the on-site implementation stage. Stay tuned!